There are two notes that you almost can't hear without feeling like you want to cry. I recently came across this phenomenon in this beautiful piece from the film Minari, written by Emil Mosseri. It is absolutely heart-wrenching. And it has me wondering, what is it about this theme that elicits such an emotional response? Where else can we find this in music and does it feel the same in other pieces? Well, what I found is pretty incredible. But the thing that makes us feel the way that we do when we hear these pieces may not be what you expect. This is such a gorgeous piece. And as we find so often with great cinematic writing, sometimes simplicity is best. This piece is written in the key of D flat major, and the melody is very simple. It just goes root of D flat, and then down a half step to C. And then we repeat the same melody, and we change the chord. We now have A flat dominant seven, and we just repeat our melody again. That's a particularly beautiful one over the chord of G flat major. And we find our way back to D flat major. These first two notes, that's where we get that feeling of like, it's this, it's this almost like a painful beauty that we're experiencing. It is, it's heart wrenching. It just, if you feel it so deeply and it kind of starts to create that little lump in your throat, right? This, something about that melody right there. It's a descending half step. Something as simple as that D flat to C motion is enough to elicit such an emotional response. Now my first reaction was to go, oh well, you know, it's just the context of the song or it's the harmony or it's something else. A descending half step interval can't be that special. So I said, well, let me find some other examples of this happening in music and see if it feels similar. Well, what I found was really interesting. And it led me to the conclusion that, yeah, there is something about the descending half step. And it can occur in a lot of different ways. It's not always purely just how we hear it in Jacob and the Stone. Let's look at another example where this descending half step occurs. And it's also very heart-wrenching in a way. And I don't want this video to be a downer, but uh, you guys gotta check this out because it's very similar. Oh. <laughs> Oof. Okay. There it was. I don't know if you heard it. Um, let's go back. Right there. Wow. Now this is an example that uses that descending half step, but it's a little bit more obscured than the example of Jacob and the Stone. Let's look at this. Instead of just like in Jacob and the Stone, instead we use, we have a little bit of a G, B, back to G before we let it land on that major seventh. Now, of course, this example is slightly different and it might elicit a slightly different emotional response. But, dare I say that there is still something, ooh, painfully beautiful about that motion right there, especially with the context of this. But you know, those examples, while different from one another, are actually fairly similar. So let's look at an example of the descending half-step relationship that is, well, decidedly different. Okay, <laughs> this is, uh, I would say this is much more traditionally sad, right? And it is oh, just pure despair. Listen to this melody. Mm. Ready, here comes our half step. Ooh, wow. Now listen to this. our first melody line. Now watch this. Wow. There's our descending half step. Now it's very different than what we just heard in Up. And it's also very different than Jacob and the Stone. Not only because both of those examples are in a major key, but G major is the home base of that particular part of married life from up. And in Jacob and the Stone, 
our home base is D flat major. And so we're just sitting on our one chord. Now, the Shostakovich example is different because we've established D minor as sort of the home base of this section, right? And then the chord that we're playing this descending half step on is, uh, it's, it's hard to hear exactly because it's kind of just voiced in the violins, but it basically sounds like that is a drastically different example of the descending half step than the previous two examples. Let's see what else we can find. but we get a second one. Listen to this. Oh, there it is. Wow. Unbelievable. And yet again, we have another example of the descending half step used in a completely different harmonic context. But you want to tell me that also doesn't have this painful, heart-wrenching beauty? Let's look at what's happening in this one. The Samuel Barber Adagio for strings has this beautiful build-up to it. It starts on E flat minor 7, and then goes to F sus to F major. G flat major. Finally making its way up to A flat major and then the melody goes up to the dominant seventh of A flat major and it sings out there before finally dropping that half step. And I think we leave, we leave our root note where it is. We almost have like an F minor sound here but with the, the A flat down here. So pretty sure that's what's going on there. Oh. oh, and then we immediately move our C down to a B natural, which might tell, I mean, maybe that's like a half diminished chord, but then we use that B. Wow. We've demonstrated now drastically differing examples of this descending half step in use and each one has its own unique painfully heartbreaking experience of just immense beauty and also sorrow and despair at the same time. What is it about these two notes that elicits this emotional response from us? I have a theory. Music that utilizes this and makes us feel like we want to cry, maybe it's because it actually sounds like people crying. Think about it. When a person cries, <laughs> Usually we have a vocalization that kind of trails off slightly. We have a pitch that kind of leans down as air just runs out of your lungs. And I don't wanna to show too many examples of this because I don't want this to be like a downer video or anything. But it is fascinating how the actual vocalizations of crying can be mimicked in music. Now, the closest that we can obviously get to one note is a half step. At least on the piano, we can't really get any closer than that. So when we're mimicking a person crying out, that's kind of the most accurate representation we can come up with in music. It's the universal sound of despair to us, whether it's out of pure sadness or something that we need to care for, like a, like a baby. That sound is recognizable across cultures and, and even species. I think it's triggering this instinctive response that we have to things that are beautiful in context, but then also have that one factor that kind of, to us, just feels like crying. It sounds like crying. I even found it in some other places too that I thought were like really surprising, but, but really cool. Check this out. Listen to this melody. Listen to this. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Oh, seems so far away. That line, it feels like a cry out. So far away. That's that same descending half step. And you know, here's another example, just to boot. Oh, 
Over the Rainbow even has a melody that first jumps up the octave and then falls onto that beautiful note. There are so many examples of this descending half step being used in a way that's just painfully beautiful. And as we've shown with each of these examples, the notes themselves, they're incredibly harmonically flexible. There's a variety of different harmonic contexts in which we can make them work. In Jacob and the Stone, it's just a root to a major seventh. It's the same way in Up. We have a root to a major seventh. But then in Shostakovich, we have this, uh, whatever this is, right? over a completely different harmonic context. Yet again, in the Samuel Barber, it's completely different as well. In the Beatles, we're using, we land on the ninth of a D minor chord. Right, which is beautiful in its own right. But across all of these examples, I think that the usage of this half step descending motion just somehow brings out that natural emotional response in us. It sounds like crying, and that's why sometimes these types of themes just make you wanna cry. Music mimics life. Sometimes it's beautiful, sometimes it's incredibly sad, but always it's incredible that we are able to do that and express our emotions using these tools. But I wanna know if there are other examples that you think of when you think of this type of melody and how it just draws that emotional response out of us. Let me know in the comments if there are other examples that you think I should look at that make you feel the same way. Thanks for watching today's video, and we'll see you in the next one.